Since I've laid my burden down, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I've laid my burden down, I feel better, so much better. Since I've laid my burden down, I feel better, so much better. Since I've laid my burden down. We know that God is omnipresent, but for us to get in line with his will. Elder Rome at this time. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for another day, Lord. We thank you, God, for waking us up this morning. We thank you for keeping us, God, from harm seen and unseen. Yes. There's so much going on in the land, God. Yes. But God, you're watching over us, God. Through every secret attack, God, every plot and scheme, God, you got your angels going out scouting the land. We thank you, Father God. Oh, God, you're increasing. You're calling for reinforcement on the behalf of your people, God. Oh, God, you got your people in a safe place. Oh, God, we see what you're doing. We want to tell you, thank you, God. We know it's not by our power. It's not by our might. But it's by your own spirit. Holy Spirit, we see you. We see you in the midnight hour. Holy Spirit, we see you on the jobs, on the highways and the byways. You're doing a work. Holy Ghost, you're doing a work. We want to tell you thank you for what you're doing. Oh God, we thank you. Somebody today, they woke up this morning. And God, they don't know they want to live or die. But today, we declare they shall live and not die. Do it, God. Do it, God. Right now, there's a man. He want to get out of his marriage. He want to leave because he feel the pressure. But I declare he hold his position. Oh, man, stay still. The Lord is doing a new thing. Oh, God, there's a widow. And she's wondering, Lord, how am I going to make it? Look at the bread. Look at the meat. We running out. I declare God today overtake her do the supernatural. Oh, God, we thank you. We pray for the orphans. We pray for the children. Protect them, God. Keep them out of harm's way. Seen and unseen. We see you moving. Behold, I hear you saying you're doing a new thing. Now it's spring forth. It's a new thing. I hear you saying, tell my people, fear not. Just walk. Proclaim my name. God, you keep showing me the vision. When David, he went out to fight Goliath. And Saul said, take my sword. Take my shield. But David said, no, I'm going. In the name of the Lord, I hear the Lord saying, when you go to work, go in the name of the Lord. When you get behind the steering wheel, drive in the name of the Lord. When you lay your hand on the sick, he said, go in the name of the Lord. This is the hour God going to perform the supernatural. 
to. He said, I know a little different. I know a little strange. But follow my spirit. He going to do it. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Bless the man of God. As he come forth, he's like Nehemiah. He refused to come down. Bless his companion. Bless his children. You're doing a new thing. There's a fresh wind in the house. There's a fresh wind on his job. There's a fresh wind in the bedroom. There's a fresh wind among his children, among his daughter, among his son. You're doing a new thing, God. And sometimes he wondered, how you going to do this, God? But God said, it's already done. Just stay on the wall. Don't look back. Don't worry. Who's with you? Don't worry. Who's against you? I say to the Lord, I hold you up with my hand. No weapons for the gist shall prosper. Say to the Lord, I'm with you. I taught you. I established you. Stay still. The Lord said, Stay still. Oh God, bless the elders. Bless the ministers. Bless the missionaries. Bless the Lord. You got them in the right place. We bind up every strategy of the enemy. Every mind games. Give them in the right place. Should I stay? Should I go? God said, Just stay still. He want to work it out. Stay still. Oh God, we pray for you. I was forth. Bless the service. Bless the saints of God. As the man of God come forth. Let us speak with us, say the Lord. Oh God, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. I will be coming to you with the Old Testament, Psalms 18. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust my bubbler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. I read to you Psalms, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 3. Amen. Our New Testament scripture reading will come from the first book of John. <clears throat> we read, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we shall be called the sons of God. Therefore the world know us not, because it knew him not. To love now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that we shall appear, and we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is, and every man that has his hope in him purif purifies himself, even as he is pure. Bless to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Amen. Good morning. I will be reading our statement of faith. We believe the Bible to be inspired and only infallible with the Word of God. We believe that there is only one God, eternally existing, in three persons God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We believe in the blessed hope, which is the rapture of the Church of God, which is in Christ and his return. We believe that the only means of being cleansed from the sin is through the repentance and faith in the presence, the precious blood. Jesus Christ. We believe that regeneration by the Holy Ghost is absolutely essential for personal salvation. We believe that the redemptive work of Christ on the cross provides healing for the human body in the absence of the living prepared. We believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit, according to Acts 2, 4, is given to believers who ask for it. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit by whose indwelling Christian is able to live a holy and separated life in this present world. You've heard me state throughout that we have never forgotten what God has blessed us with. And we take time out now to celebrate those who are among us. And we take time out to simply celebrate life. We wanted to pause because if you've had a birthday, if you've had a birthday on last week, you know we're transitioning from September to October, but if you had a birthday in September and we did not uh, recognize, and uh, if you had a birthday just a few days ago in October, 
We're going to ask you to stand at this time. For those who are viewing us, we might not be able to see you, but if you would stand, and if you're unable to stand, just wave your hand. We are grateful, we are grateful that God has allowed you to be in our lives, and we are grateful that God continues to guide us, that we can enrich your life. But we are fortunate that you have been able to also be a part of our lives. So on behalf of the Unity Church of God in Christ, on behalf of those members who are with us by YouTube and Facebook, we're all saying to you and to those that are not with us, happy birthday. We are grateful, we are grateful that God has allowed you to be with us. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Often we find ourselves crying more tears than smiles. But Lord, we pause because you have given us those moments in life that we can share with one another. Lord, we thank you that you have allowed them to be with us. To those who are just beginning life, give us the wisdom that we can continue to plant seeds and as we nourish what you have already planted, that they can grow. Give us the wisdom, Lord, that we can prepare them to do thy will. To those, Lord, who have been with us just a little bit longer, work the will out into them. Pour the anointing on them. Open up their eyes and their minds that they can hear. And then to those, Lord, that are seasoned and have been with us for a while, we thank you for their wisdom. We thank you for their love. Lord, we pray right now that you would ignite and encourage their minds and ignite their body, Lord, because work is not done. There's yet for them to do. And so, Lord, until they speak to this generation, continue to watch over them, continue to protect them. And we will give you all honor and glory. Amen and amen. We are so grateful for you and your birthday. We're going to ask Sister Graves if she would come and render us a song at this time. Praise the Lord on this morning. We come to lift up the name of the Lord. We honor you, Lord, with our praise and worship on this morning. Come on, let's put those hands together and give God praise on this morning.
was not at fault. He came down just for me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he loved you so much. He loved you so much. He loved you so much. You know, sometimes we have a hard time just dealing with people uh, when we think that they're uh, coming uh, to engage us. But can you imagine taking all of that for someone else? Being lied on for someone else? Being spit on for someone else? Hey, glory, glory. To be what? To be beat? Hey! Oh, we've seen videos, but to be beat to where they got tired and they had to switch. Hey, thank you. For someone else? Hey! He had an opportunity. He had an opportunity. First, he did not have to come, and then he could have said, I changed my mind, but yet he went to the cross. He went to the cross. He went to the cross. And he loved us so much that when he was on the cross, and they had already nailed him, and they had already begun to lie upon him, and they gambled for his clothes, he still had enough love to say, forgive them. But they don't even know what they do. Hey! Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. See, we came to praise him. We came to praise him. We sometimes get in a routine, but we came to praise him. I came to worship his name. Thank you, Lord, for giving me another chance. Thank you, Lord, for providing. Thank you, Lord, for never giving up on me. Thank you, Lord. For not forsaking me. Hey, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. Consistently want to uh, remind us that we're still modifying and uh, there is a point in our service where we would have the opportunity that we come to the throne of grace and as we would lay down our gift and our commitment to God that we would play, pray collectively. I'm going to ask you to stand. We have modified to where as you come in, there is the opportunity that you can sow whatever God has put on your heart or when you leave. But we pray, we pray that God continues to watch over you. Individually, we must make our own decision. There is nothing that we have to be forced upon ourselves. God is in control of all. And so as we stand together, let me just pray that God touches your heart to encourage you. He has already spoke within his covenant. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he reap. Now it's up to you to try him. Don't do it for me. Try him. I had to learn. I could not give to man because man was going to disappoint me. As much as I told myself, I'm going to write down this number. I'm going to get this name. And in the time of need, I'll make this call. But it seems like when I really needed them, they didn't really need me. And so I have learned that I give all my trust to God. I lean on God. He carries me in his bosom. Oh, don't let me paint you a rosy picture. There's been nights where I've cried. It seems more than I've prayed. But he has yet sustained. Thank you, Jesus. He has yet provided. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. But before we ask anything of you, Lord, we ask you that you forgive us anything that we may have done. David asked to be washed with high and soap. He said, wash me, Lord, that I might be pure and true unto you. So, Lord, I ask you to look over us. Wash our souls. Wash our hearts. Wash our minds. Lord, we want to do what you would have for us to do. Lord, we want to do your will. Not man's will, but your will, Lord. So, Lord, the covenant has been laid, Lord. Touch their hearts, Lord. You share with them. You tell them. You guide them. 
so that you can get the victory. Man sometimes wants to put themselves in the way, but we remove man and give you all honor. We give you all glory. God, we pray right now that they would have favor within their lives. Lord, we pray right now that the adversary can no longer have any holds on them. They will be the lender, not the borrower. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you would fortify them. Continue to keep your head about them. In the name of Jesus. Lord, give them the strength that when their natural eye says that it is impossible, the spirit inside will begin to speak life back into them. Begin to speak that it is possible. It is possible. Lord, we live and stand on the word of miracle work in Jesus. We exclaim with all of our hearts, miracle work in Jesus. We are grateful that you have allowed us the opportunity to get to know you better. So, Lord, I tell and ask. I tell them to believe in you, and I ask you, Lord, to continue to watch over them. Protect them from those dangers that they don't even see. Bind right now the adversary, every plan that he comes against, because we speak no weapon formed against them. No weapon, no weapon shall it prosper or gain any ground. Thank you, Lord, for the sacrifices that has been made. Lord, I pray that you would give them so that they can be a testimony. Touch their homes, Lord. You have the ability and the authority, just like you did in the Old Testament. And you've shown them in the New. Dispatch the angels right now. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Where they are by, sanctify the door, sanctify the windows, any opening, bind the adversary so there's peace within that home. Bind the adversary so there's love within that home. Bind the adversary so there's harmony within that home. We will give you all honor. We will give you all glory. Lord, we acknowledge who you are, the King of kings. The I am the great. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Above all others, there is none like you. Lord, we have given you all that we have. Continue to encourage us in our hearts. Continue to speak to our minds. Lord, give us that connection to do thy covenant and thy will. We will continue to give all honor and glory. In thy son Jesus' name, amen, 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 and amen. You may be seated at this time. I'm going to ask Elder Singletary if he would come and give us just a hymn as we prepare. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's give God praise. There's a lily is in the valley, uh-huh, bright as the morning star. There is a lily in the valley, bright as the morning star. There is a lily in the valley, bright as the morning star.
Chapter 37, book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 3 through 10. 
the third verse through the tenth verse. I will get through the King James and then the NIV. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me in verse 4, Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones in verse 5, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Verse 6, And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring upon flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. When I beheld, lo, the sinew and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then say he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds. O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. Verse 10, so I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Very quickly, the NIV reads, Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 3 through 10 reads thus, He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I said, O oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath into you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone on bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say it. This is what the seven Lord says. Come from the four winds, mm -hmm. O breath, and breathe into these slain that they may live. Mm -hmm. And so in the verse 10, he said, so I prophesy that he commanded me. And breath entered them, and they came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. The moment that we have together, we'll be speaking from the thought of revived and ready. Revived and ready. Yes, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment. Lord, we pray that your word comes to each and every one of us. Open up our ears that we may hear. Plant it deep within our hearts as you prepare our souls. Lord, I pray that the anointing falls throughout everyone who hears. You shape it and give them personal revelation. Each one of us at a different state and moment. Each one, is, one of us is vulnerable. Each one has been attacked but yet has held on. So give us your word that it can encourage us. We pray that your word would come, that we'll be able to do thy will and be able to be confident in our work and we'll be able to go a little bit further. So again, I plant into them that your word would inspire each and every one. Lord, I pray that as you begin to minister to us, Lord, make sure that anything that is not of you, take it out, that we may be able to get every ounce of your word that we may be to hear your word oh 
obey your word, and then we'll be able to do thy work. We will give you all honor and glory. Touch what needs to be touched, Lord, and give us a clear understanding. Awaken what needs to be wakened and give us our own revelation. And we'll give you all honor and glory. Amen and, and amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Revived and ready. Revived and ready. In 1986, not that long ago for some, in 1986, two and a half year old girl named Michelle Funk fell into a stream and drowned. Stream uh, was very cold. There were pieces of ice in it and there was snow was on the banks. By the time the paramedics found her, she had stopped breathing for more than an hour. Her heart had stopped. In other words, in the world that we live in and how we look at our medical sheets and how we go by certain charts, in other words, she was dead. Somewhat unexplicable. Somehow they did not stop. The paramedics began to work on her and they continued to work on her even though she did not breathe, had not been breathing for a whole hour. And when they got her to the hospital, somehow the doctors were encouraged so they began to work on her as well. Then, three hours here they are working, trying different things, trying to bring her blood back up to a temperature, no breathing whatsoever, not sure if her brain would even function. Three hours after she was clinically dead, Michelle Funk took a breath. Her heart began to flutter. She began to recognize her situations. They followed back up. Just a few years later, two and a half years later, at the age of five, they said there was no signs of trauma. They said her brain worked perfectly. They said that she was able to move about. Have to understand, Michelle Funk was now, had been revived, and now she was ready. She was ready to live. We speak often about the last year and a half and the pandemic and the challenges that it has presented us. But even before the pandemic, there were some of us still dealing with financial challenges. See, even before the pandemic, there were some of us dealing with despair and disappointment. Some of us dealing with health issues. Dealing with the feeling of feeling overwhelmed and not too many opportunities. Some of us was dealing with the emotional feeling of feeling empty and feeling hollow on the yeah. inside. Yeah. Of simply feeling dead inside of our minds and sometimes within our own bodies. Yeah. We questioned our purpose. Concerned about our spiritual connection with God. Wondering if we would ever claim the year that we lost to the many tears that we shed. Right. Wondering if we would ever be able to dream again. Wondering if we would be able to hope again. Wondering if we would ever be secured within the means of our finance. How about when we prayed and wonder if we would ever be healed. Wondering if we ever get a chance to use our spiritual gifts again because of life distractions. Wondering if we would ever recover. Right. from the hurt and pain caused by others. Yes, we wondered if we would ever really love again. Wondered if our dry, damaged, broken heart would ever live again. Yeah. See, here's something I need you to know that God's word can revitalize. God's word can rejuvenate. God's word can create life within you. All right. God's word has the power to rejuvenate. 
it can revitalize, and it will create life within you. Yes. Our text, we read Ezekiel chapter 37, but there is a period of time before we get to our text. The children of Israel had been in bondage, and they had did some things that God had says, now I must judge, and they had been in bondage, and God still heard their cry, but God had promised something to them. He had promised to restore them. But you have to understand Israel's perspective. Israel had been in bondage for a period of time that it seemed impossible. Due to their current condition, we heard the words of the prophets prophesied, but we did not understand because we're still in bondage. See, Israel at the time felt they were dead as a nation. Israel felt deprived because they could not get to the land that was given to them. Yes, sir. They couldn't even have a king at the time and they had no access to their temple. Israel had been divided. The Babylonians had, Babylonians had came in and had divided them and dispersed them. And they had been deprived and dispersed for so long that the unification, them coming back together, them reestablishing themselves as a nation seemed impossible. No way can it happen. Yeah. I hear the nice words, but no way will it happen. So God tells Ezekiel in chapter 37 and verse 3, he puts him up in the spirit and he presents Ezekiel with a paradox. The paradox is simply defined as seemingly absurd, self-contradictory, doesn't make sense. No way can it happen. Ezekiel in the spirit, trusting God, knowing God, is presented with a paradox. Maybe understanding it this way if I explain it. An airplane, an airplane, this large metal object. If you have never seen an airplane ever in your life, if you have never taken a flight upon an airplane, and I showed you this uh, metal object that sits on a runway, and I asked you, do you think it can fly? If you had never experienced that, you would look at me and say, that is absurd. That is unreasonable. It is ridiculous. It doesn't have wings like a bird. It doesn't have any feathers. It seems too heavy. It is unthinkable. And if it does, it would be astonishing to the mind. So you have to understand from your perspective, this heavy piece of metal, this heavy piece of metal can never get up off the ground and neither would it be able to hold you as it flew. He would simply say it is absurd. No way. What about a cruise ship? Some of you have seen the large boats and experience. If you had never had the opportunity or the pleasure to ride on one of those cruise ships and I showed you that large boat in dry dock and the shape of it and the vastness of it, and I would ask you, do you believe that this cruise ship has the ability to float on water? Do you believe it can have enough buoyance that it won't be sunken under? And there you are standing next to this great vessel, barely can see up on the side, definitely cannot see the top of it. And if you have never experienced or if you have never seen it in work, again, you would say this is unreasonable to think this way. It is ridiculous for you to ask me if this heavy piece of metal assembly of parts can even float, let alone keep me from drowning if I was to get on board. It would seem simply absurd. So Ezekiel is here. The prophet himself is faced with a dilemma. He knew, he knew that the humanity, the, the, the educated, the science side of his mind said that it was impossible for dry, bleached bones to live again. 
But the prophet Ezekiel had enough sense to recognize who was asking the question. Yes, yes. Thank, you, Thank you, Jesus. It is in verse 3 that the prophet is asked the question by the sovereign God that was asked, Son of man, can these bones live? Yes. It is the prophet who said that only God you know. There he is, transported in the spirit. He's caught up in spirit and God has him. And God takes him to a valley, a valley full of dry bones. The Bible states that the prophet noticed that they were bleached and dry. Why is that important? That they were bleached and dry. See, if you were the prophet and you saw the bones that were bleached and dry, they were there because of their current appearance. You notice the density and you notice the color of the bones. And they appeared because of their condition that they had been there for a while. Yes, yes. They had been in that condition for a long period of time. Not only were they dry and then you see the bleach, but how can they get back to life? See, the appearance, when we say something looks bleached, it means that these bones no longer had that appearance of what they looked like they were created for. They had lost that what they had created for. They no longer had the radiance of what they were created for. They no longer appear to look like what they were created for. Yeah. Oh, stay with me for a little bit. Stay with me for a little bit. Yes, sir. Being bleached, they had lost some of their color. They had seems to be dried up. There was no use left in them because they appeared to be bleached. They had changed. I'm just a little bit curious if some of us look bleached to others. I'm curious if some of us no longer look like what we were created to be. If some of us have been struggling for so long, contemplating and wrestling for so long, that we no longer appear to have a relationship with God. Yeah. See, the prophet noticed that the bones looked at bleached. Yes, sir. He also noticed that the bones appeared to be dry. Yeah. In other words, there was no life left in them. There were no movements by them. They appeared to be used up and gone. Wonder if we look dry to other people. I wonder if we no longer ourselves look like we have life in us. What if, if we ourselves have been struggling so long that we no longer look like we still believe that God can. I wonder if we have missed so long of our faith connection that we have forgotten that God can still do the impossible. I wonder if we have we allowed the valley of life, the valley of despair, the valley of uncertainty, the valley of unfairness, yes, the valley of physical limitations, yes, the valley of health restrictions. Yes, Have we allowed these valleys to affect the spirit inside of us that we, from other people's perspective, are soon to be dry and bleached? Oh, but don't you worry if you stay with me just a little bit longer, just a few minutes more. I can tell you about a God that can revive and get you ready. I can tell you about a God who can revive you. And don't matter the valley, he can prepare you to deal with the valley. Why do you say this? Because I stand on the word of God, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, that says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than that what is in this world. I know about a God that can 
take the paradox and put it in a simple mindset. And as he asked Ezekiel the simple question, Ezekiel was not sure of what might have caused the dry bones. He was not there of their destruction or their death. He did not know how long these bones had been in the vat. Amen. He did not know what really had the effect of their current condition. But all Ezekiel knew from his perspective is that they were dry and bleach. There had been in their current condition for a while that they did not appear to have any more life left within them. See, within the context of our text, uh -huh. we pick up at verse 3. So there is no focus on what caused the bones to be in their current condition. The focus was more about the question. Uh -huh. The focus was on the question of, son of man, can these bones live? Yeah. The prophet recognizing God's authority and God's power. He said within his spiritual mind, God, only you know. You have the overwhelming power. And I love where God then takes it. God, sensing the spirit of the prophet, sensing the prophet's belief and trust in God, God instructed the prophet Ezekiel to prophesy. Yeah. Speak to these bones. Yeah. Speak to these bones. Yeah. Speak to these bones. Yeah. Prophesy is simply a forecast. Here in the church of God in Christ, there was a theme, a mantra in the last few years. We would say something like that. I see you in your future. And you look better than you do right now. Yes, Prophesizing that, foretelling that the bones that look dry today doesn't mean that's how you have to stay. It doesn't mean that's how you have to be limited. Can these bones live, son of man? Can these bones live, son of man? Can these bones live? Ezekiel had faith in God. Ezekiel believed in God. Ezekiel believed that God had the power. So when he said, when God told him to prophesy, Ezekiel did not hesitate. He began to speak because he believed what God can do. Yeah. I wonder, is there anybody, what is there anybody who still has faith that God can do the impossible? I wonder, is there anybody, is there anybody who still believes that God can do the impossible. Yes, I wonder is anybody left that is convinced that God has the power to yeah. do yeah. the impossible. Yeah. God told Ezekiel to speak to the bones. So the prophet spoke with all the assurance he had in him. The prophet says, dry bones hear the word of the Lord. All right. He said, speak to him and tell him. So the prophet says, I will make breath enter you. He says, speak to the bones, and he says, dry bones, you will come to life. Dry bones, we will attach the tendons, the sinew to you. I will renew your flesh. I will cover you with skin. You will come back to life. Speak to the bones. All right. God told the prophet. See, I understand. I understand despair and disappointment. I'm not too far above and removed from him and myself that life difficulties, even health issues, can cause us to feel separated from God. All right. Wondering, God, if you still know about me, God, do you still know about my plight? God, will you come my way? I understand that these difficult moments can cause us to feel that we dried up on the inside, wondering if it would ever end. But just like the prophet Ezekiel, God did not reveal to exactly who needs this word. But let me tell you right now, dry bones, I need you to hear the word of the Lord. Dry bones, I need you to hear the word of the Lord. Dry bones, I need you to hear the word of the Lord. I need you to hear that God said that if you believe 
on him. He will reassemble your tendons. Understand, this is the tissue that connects the muscle to the bone. He says, I will reconnect your spirit with my spirit. Thus, it becomes a little bit easier in the time of trouble that your hand gets a little bit light. When I attach your spirit to my spirit, in the midst of the trouble, it becomes a little bit easier to sing that him that I can overcome. In the times of the trouble, because you are connected to me, you can quote the scripture, no weapon formed against me will prosper. Speak to the dry bones. Speak to the dry bones. God says, I will renew your flesh. I will renew your flesh. I will put a new heart within you. A heart that is no longer broken. A heart that can feel. A heart that is able to believe. A heart that has the ability to trust in God, not in man. Speak to the bones and tell them, I will cover you. I will cover you with skin. I will cover you with my protection. I will cover you with my love. I will hide you within my secret place. In the time of trouble, when it seems there is no more that can be done, I have a God that has a secret place. I have a God that has a secret place. I have a God that will take me to Psalms 91 and 1. I have a God that says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Don't even have to worry about how you are planning to come against me. I can abide by the Most High God. You coming after me, don't you know there is a God that sits high? Ask the Babylonians that you think you got it all figured out. Ask the Amorites that you think you got it all figured out. Ask the Egyptians when you come against God's unknown. Behooves you to recognize. Behooves you to understand the difficulties that is at hand. The prophet Ezekiel was faith with a question that seems absurd. He was faced with a question that was really unreasonable. If we begin to suss between our own selves and if we were to go to that valley of bones and if I was to ask you, can these bones live? You would look at me as if I was ridiculous and then say it is unthinkable. Thank you, Jesus. But all in the hands of a living God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. In the hands of a living God. The question proposed opportunity. Can these bones live? The question gives us the ability to trust just a little bit longer. Can these bones live? The question gives us, hey, thank you, Jesus, to know that our end is not hand. Here they are, the dry bones. They're used up. These dry bones appear that their purpose had been mismanaged. These dry bones seem like their time for action has passed them by. These dry bones appear that they had been met with a demise and they would never get back to where they were before. But I know a God that can revive and get you ready. I am concerned about you. I'm concerned about you. Do you feel that you have been used up? Do you feel that your purpose has been mismanaged? Yeah. Do you feel that your time has passed you by? Yeah. Do you feel that you no longer are valuable? Do you feel that your life that is currently dealing with the different obstacles that it seems that it's overwhelming? Yeah. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. you that is dealing with despair and disappointment, you that is dealing with the health issues, yes, you that are dealing with the feeling of having few opportunity. You that is dealing with the emotional or feeling empty and hollow inside. Don't you know and believe? Don't you know and believe that the dry bones can live again? Want you to know that you can live again. I'm not so much concerned about your neighbor because it's an individual thing. So I want you to speak to your own self. Sometimes we want to cause somebody else 
But I need us to first begin at home, for us to begin individually, for us to begin that we can. I need us to prophesy on our own self. I need us to be able to stand on the word of God. Oh, let's work together. Can you put your hand on your own chest? Put your hand on your own chest. And I need to ask you a question like we asked Prophet Ezekiel. Can these bones live? Hey, glory be to God. Glory be to God. God wants to know from your own mouth, can these bones live? Can these bones live again? God is curious, do you still have your faith in him? God wants to know, have you given up on him? God wants to know, do you think it is absurd that you cannot be revitalized? Amen. God wants to know, do you think it is unreasonable for you to be happy again? All right. God wants to know, do you think it is unthinkable for you to have a successful relationship? All right. God wants to know, do you think that you can still be rejuvenated within your body? Yeah. Do you know that it is God's hand that can revitalize every spirit within your body? Yes, it is in God's hand that he can revitalize every million and dream that you have within your mind. It is in God's hands that he can revitalize every one of your relationships. It is in God's hands that he can revitalize all of our dreams. It is in God's hands that he can bring back the days and revitalize your ministry. It is in God's hands that he can revitalize the anointing that he had already placed on you. God wants you to know. God wants you to know. God wants you to know. Speak to them that the dry bones can live. That God can do the impossible. God wants you to know that there's nothing, 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 nothing. Nothing, nothing too hard for God. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Hey, hey, hey. I need you to hold on just a little bit longer. Hold on just a little bit longer. I understand that some of us feel that we have been tossed aside. I understand that some of us feel that we have been let down. I understand that some of us feel the hollowness inside. I also understand that horrible, painful feeling when you lost the love of God. But I know a God. I know a God that specializes hey, 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 in transformation. I know a God that can revive a lot. I know a God that specializes in Juvenation. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's not focus on our circumstances, but how about if we depend on God? Hey, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No longer will we allow the enemy to whisper within our ears, but we will live again. We know that you are great. God. We know that God has victory in his hands. We know that you are God of endless mercy. We know, hey, thank you, Jesus, that as we walk through the paths, that we will no longer be afraid. For thou art with us. Thou protected us. Thou will guide us. Hey, thank you, Jesus. We believe that every dog will be rescued. We believe everywhere your son, hey, will be saved. No longer, hey, 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 thank you, Jesus. No longer will we perceive ourselves to be broken. No longer will we walk around with bowed heads. Hey, Lord, I, hey, thank you, Jesus. No longer will we allow words to hurt us. No longer will we allow them to penetrate our hearts. 
I know a God that is not dead. 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 Was asked the question. You seem so confident. How do you know a God is not dead? Then I had to look at him carefully and I said, because I can feel him within my hand. Hey, glory, glory. I told him I can feel him in my feet. Hey! And if you begin to bury with God, you can feel him all. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey! Dry bones, we will live again. Dry bones, we will live again. Dry bones, we will minister again. We will live again. Hey! Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. You are faced with a paradox. You are faced with a tough decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yourself must ask. God wants to know, can these dry bones live? Mm -hmm. I cannot tell you. That is your relationship with God. But I know a God who can. 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 I don't get so much concerned what life has done to you. I'm not concerned by the circumstances that has invaded your peace and your mind, but if you can shake it off and begin to speak. It was in that paradox that when things seemed impossible, the prophet says in the natural mind, this is, cannot happen. I've been beat for so long. I've been holding on for a miracle for so long. I've been looking for provisions for so long. I've been asking for so long that my spirit is getting dried up, that my my appearance seems that there is no longer hope. And in the midst, when it seems that you have to eat, God asks, can these dry bones live? Can you still live? Can you still believe? Can you believe that God can still do it? God specializes in the impossible. I shared with you just not uh, many days ago on how a conversation took place. Here God was sitting there watching over. The devil came by and I shared with you a little bit of Job. Job had no idea that they were talking about him. The devil was going to and fro. God said, what's wrong with you? I'm trying to find some people. I want to consume some people who don't believe on you. I want to consume some people that no longer trust in you. I want to consume some people that think it's impossible for you to still be in control. God said, hey, have you tried my servant Job? Job had no clue. Job was minding his own business. Job was trying to serve God. He ain't bother nobody. He didn't cause no destructions. He said, have you tried my servant Job? How do you know they ain't talking about you right now? How do you know God don't have trust in you right now? Hey, the devil said, oh yeah, I seen Job, but you got a hedge around him. Oh, I was trying to get to Job, but you got a hedge around him. I was trying to break Job's spirit, but you had a hedge around him. I was trying to get Job not to believe in you anymore, but you had a hedge around him. I was trying to get Job to walk away from you, but you had a hedge around him. God said, I, I trust and believe in Job. He said, I tell you what, I'll remove the hedge. He said, but listen to me very carefully. You cannot take his life. You can do what you need, but you cannot take his life. Read Job for yourself. See, we, we skim it as if it's a novel. But soon Job got word that every one of his children had passed away. Hey, glory be to God. Can you imagine the heartbreak that had came together sibling within sibling? They had came together to celebrate. They loved and they honored their parents. But they got word that every child had been taken away. Then they got word that they came and took some of his wealth. Hey, glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Then Job health got bad. Hey, glory, glory, glory. People closest to Job.
Job. Tell him, just curse your God and die. He don't love you no more. Curse your God and die. He don't care about you no more. Hey, glory, glory, glory. Hey, but Job had a human side. God, Job began to say, I cursed the day I was born. And God said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who are you? Were you there when I began to form the world? Hey, in the midst of our human side of us, we still have a divine side. Greater is in us than is in the world. We want to go to the 40th chapter. We want to get to the end of Job. But you got to read all those chapters in between. Job had to toss and turn. Job had to still go through some things. But all when we get to the end of the book, we begin to speak double for the trouble. The Bible says God restored everything. God said, are you done, devil? Have you done playing your silly games? Are you done trying to put people away and persuade them? I know a God that has many jokes. I have a God that says in the midst of the turmoil, when in the midst when it seems I cannot see anymore, when I cannot breathe and there's very little hope, I lean back within the bosoms of his chest. Hold me just a little bit longer. Care for me just a little bit longer. I believe that the dry bones can live. I believe that he can restore. I believe every year that I share with you. Give it back, Lord. Give it back, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hey, glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, 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 glory. Hey! I don't know if you have impressed God enough that he can speak about you. I don't know if you impress God enough that he can say, have you tried my servant? But oh, can you imagine having favor with God? Can you imagine having so much favor that God said, go ahead and try? I know and I believe. Hey! I know and I believe. 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 Hey, 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 hey. When you believe, you can prophesize to yourself. You can prophesize to yourself. You can prophesize to yourself. You can say, dry bones, you shall live. Hey, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. hey. God's word can revitalize. Hey, God's word still has the ability to rejuvenate you. God's word can create a life with inside of you. Even in the state that you're in right now, you can be encouraged to somebody. Even in the state that you are right now. See, we talk about what we've overcome, but what about what we're going through? We talked about after we make it, but what, are we going through? what about when we're going through? We talk about when all things are good, but what about when things are not so good? Hey, glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Hey! I believe in God. I trust in God. I ain't got to get you to force me to believe. I believe. You can say whatever you want to say. I'm going to trust in him. For centuries, they have heard God's word. For centuries, we have been told. There's a reason why they said hell has enlarged itself. They didn't say hell is getting smaller because people are listening. It says hell has enlarged itself. And I pray that you are not going there, but they're making room for you if you do not get right. I pray that you do not open your eyes, but they're making room for you if you don't put it in order. I pray that you do not have to suffer, but there's room for you. I pray that they don't have your name on the door. I pray that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I pray that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. But oh, they're making room for you. They said make another addition because some still don't want to believe. Add on a little bit more rooms because some still are being in denial. Broaden up because some are still listening to the opposite. Hey, thank you, Jesus. He ain't changed his playbook. He's using pride and vanity. Thank you, Jesus. Doubt and hesitation. Hey, glory, glory, glory. Frustration. Hey, glory, glory. He has not changed 
from generation to generation the same thing. If we don't get right, if we don't get right, if we don't get right, we ourselves would be in the same predicament. We ourselves would be in the same predicament. We ourselves would be in the same predicament. We pray that God would fortify our hearts. We pray that God would fortify our minds. Watch over us and protect us. Guide us and strengthen us. Hey, glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, 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 glory. Hey, 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 hey. I am grateful that God has given us the opportunity that he has not closed the doors. Each one of us have that opportunity. And he just does not look out for the sinners, but those who have been holding on by the tips of the finger, he can still encourage you and lift you up. He has not forgotten you. He has not forsaken you. Hey, thank you, Jesus. 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 If you would stand at this moment, I want us to get ready. We're going to prepare before we take our communion. Before we take our communion. I want us to have the opportunity. Right where you're at right now. The throne of grace is above. It is not limited, neither confined. His mercy is not limited. He sees and he knows all. Right where you're at right now. We want to pray that God would give you that opportunity. We want to pray right now that God would allow you once again to believe on him. We pray right now that God would take you within his arms. Past our own simple understanding. Our Father, Lord, we ask of you. Lord, I ask you first to look upon those who are making a decision right now to trust and obey you. They're making a decision that they want to be saved right now. By them simply believing that you died on the cross. By them simply believing that you can re, uh, heal them and, and repent from their sins. By them simply open up their mouth and say, God, forgive me of my sin. God, I know that you raised up from the grave and you rose up again. I know that you are a God and you can forgive me for everything that I've done. I know that you are a God and I will believe on you. Father, we give the opportunity for those who are coming to know your grace. But Lord, we speak also to those believers who have been holding on and have had tough days and tougher nights. We speak into their lives that you will reignite their will. You will anoint their spirit. You will give them a mind that would hold on to you and to serve you. Prepare their hearts, Lord. As we prepare ourselves for this communion, we do this in remembrance of you. So, Lord, forgive us of anything that we might have done. Put us in the moments of your throne and grace that we can come to you clean. And Lord, we ask of you that you see our hearts. We ask of you, Lord, not only us, but to our families, to our loved ones, to our community. Rest on our own will and our spirit and our relationship with you. We will give you all honor and glory. Lord, I speak ahead and I thank you for giving them an opportunity. I thank you, Lord, for speaking to their minds. Lord, I ask that as they sleep, let this word, let this word be planted deep within their hearts. When the enemy whispers that they are not, speak to them that they are and they will be. And give them life once again. And we give you all glory in our son Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. I'm going to ask the elders if they would come and take their position. I'm going to ask them to come and take their position. To those who are with us in the virtual world, I want you to get ready. I want you to get ready. If you have your chalice, you can get your chalice. If you have not your chalice, just a small piece of bread or a small cracker, you can get that ready. 
I'm going to ask you that if you did not have the juice, then you can get a small amount of water. We will be taking it together, those who are with us virtually, as well as those that are in the congregation. I'm going to ask Elder Lone as he comes and stands with me. And as we get ready, I'm going to ask for him to pray over the communion first. Then I'm going to ask Elder McFarland, Elder Singletary, they will serve you your communion. Amen. You will take it right where you're at, and then we will take it together. So we're going to ask Elder Rome if he would come as he prays over the communion, and then we will begin our communion. Amen. Father God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you. We thank you, Lord, we're able to take part in this communion, Lord. Lord, we honor you, Lord Jesus. You should do this in remembrance of you. Lord, we ask you to cleanse us and wash of any sin, any hidden sin, anything unconfessed, Lord. We give it to you, Lord. Fill us up, Lord, as we eat the bread, Lord. Fill us up, Lord, mentally, physically, spiritually. Let us love you with our heart, mind, body, soul. As we drink from the cup, Lord, your blood. Oh, Lord, take out, take out all impurities. Impurities of the mind. Impurities of the heart. Oh, Lord, let us go through the transformation you desire for us to go through, Lord. Lord, we take this communion, Lord. In unity, Lord, where there's unity and strength, and we get us to you this hour, God. Oh, God, we set aside things of the world, and we do as you command us, God. Bless us, God. Do something supernatural. When we go home, on the jobs, in our families, God, we stand in the gap just not for ourselves, but for those we pray for, God. Do it, God. In your son Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to ask Elder McFarland and Elder Singletary you would now serve the congregation with communion. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It must not suffer. saying, this is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it, you do show in remembrance of me. All drink. We thank you for participating in our communion just before we leave singing a hymn. We're going to ask Elder Cannon to come with our closing prayer and our benediction. Praise God. God, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. Hallelujah, that we shall live again. Oh God, we thank you for this first Sunday. We thank you for every person that has attended. As we leave this place, hallelujah, we do not leave your presence. Bless us as we leave here. Let a fence of protection guide every person as we leave this place in the name of Jesus we pray let your presence let your mercy let your grace accompany us this week as we go on our way in Jesus name we pray amen what I say unto one I say unto all watch and pray praise God oh
the blood. On behalf of Pastor and First Lady Rogers, thank you for joining us today. Please stand by for our announcements for the week. Tuesday, join us for our weekly intercessory call at 6.30 p.m. Dial-in information is available at unitypropic.org and on our Facebook page. On Wednesday, join us on Facebook Live at 6.30 p.m. for Bible study with Pastor Anthony Rogers. To stay current on these and upcoming events, we invite you to subscribe to our Facebook page and sign up to receive our email updates. To join the Unity Kojic family, go to unitykojic.org. That is U-N-I-T-Y-C-O-G-I-C dot And remember, for with God nothing shall be impossible. May God bless you and have a great week.